It's November 23rd, 2019, a Saturday here in southeast Wisconsin. I'm making some changes to my workbench area. I, I've had no computer out here and um, really needed one in my shop for a long time. So uh, last summer, a friend of mine got a new laptop with Windows 10 and uh, said that this computer was this pavilion was basically junk and dropped it off. He wanted me to pull some files off the hard drive which I did but he had it so messed up <coughs> he it was running Vista and he had uh, so many I think about 45 or 50 gigabytes of documents of some sort in his fo folder I got some of it off, but it was really a mess, and then he said, well, he didn't need it all anyways. But anyways, I loaded uh, Linux Mint on this computer, as you can see. I don't know if that shows up real well on my screen or not. Uh, it's connected into my uh, network via Wi-Fi. That's what that device on top of the computer is. Although there's three walls and a distance between the modem and uh, um, and this, but it still works pretty good. And I needed it so that I could run YouTube uh, videos while I'm working on something for reference, uh, which I've always needed. The one thing I do need now is I need a, uh, a printer in here, which I, I will eventually locate. Here I have YouTube pulled up. Here's my channel. Um, and it works pretty good. And uh, I had a power supply in the in the cabinet below and, and uh, I could switch it on and demonstrate it for people. But the thing something's intermittent and it and it quit working. That was my uh, repair a month ago on my Radiola 20. So anyways, this works real well for me. And I'm glad I've added it to my workshop. Here's another computer I'm working on. This is a Unix box, a, a Sun Ultra 10 with a uh, Creator 3D video card in it. Uh, was very high end at the late 90s, about 97, 98. And if you see on the screen, you can see I've uh, checked some error. Uh, the NVRAM chip uh, doesn't hold memory because the uh, embedded lithium battery that's uh, epoxied on the top of the chip has lost its power. I have a new replacement chip for it, so I hope I'm going to be able to get this thing working. Uh, it runs Solaris 9, and I'm not sure what I'm going to use it for um, yet. <laughs> In its day, this is a very expensive and high-end PC workstation in its day. So I'm hoping that with my replacement NVRAM chip, I can uh, maybe get this thing operating better. I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to put in the commands in the old chip to just be able to restart it and to show you what it, uh, what it does. So here are the commands I had to program into the NVRAM chip that's in there, and they, they won't work. I'll still get an error when I reboot because the battery is dead and it, it doesn't really hold this information, but uh, these MK, MKP uh, commands put the data into the slot, the memory slot in the RAM chip. Um, the first set of numbers, uh, this number 8, 0, 0, and 20. These were the uh, Sun, the first uh, three bits of the Sun um, MAC address. And then the MAC address that's on the label on the NVRAM chip are these three bits of information here. And uh, <clears throat> so I've entered that all in. This command at the bottom, don't ask me the details on it because I got, <laughs> I got this information off the internet. Basically, now all I have to do is type reset, which I will do. And enter. 
And now she should boot up to the Solaris login screen. So here we are at the Solaris login screen. The login is root. And the password. And now we're in Solaris 9. Now like I say, this has this is a Creator 3D card in this computer, so I should be able to do some pretty neat uh, uh, graphics on it. Uh, I don't know what's all loaded as applications in here. I haven't explored uh, Solaris 9 very well. But right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to replace the NV RAM chip and see if I can get it so that I can um, that I don't have to type all those commands in like I did it in the first screen. So here I am in the terminal console rather than the administration console which is going to be constantly trying to connect up to a network. So to shut this machine down I have to type in a command. It's very simple. It's called power off. And that should do it. Syncing file systems. There's nothing really to sync. And it's done. It's down. Now I'll look into replacing that NVRAM chip. So exploring the inside of it, Ed, here is a unique, uh, the, the Spark ship, chip. Uh, this is a 64-bit chip. And uh, there are four available PCI slots. And here's a very robust video card down here. This is what makes it a uh, 3D Creator PC as this video card. And here is the culprit right here. This is the NV RAM chip with the dead battery. So I'm going to pull that out and put another one in and see how, how I do in uh, fixing this thing. Maybe I'll fix it, maybe I won't. So here's the NV RAM chip as I pulled it out. It's got a carrier. It, um, I don't believe this car carrier will work for my replacement. My replacement has to go in without the carrier. But the main thing is is I made a note of how this was oriented in the socket. I know where pin one is. And uh, this little circle up here. Let me see if I get this more in the light. This little circle up here is pin one. And of course you have the uh, half moon uh, indent here. And that matches up with the socket that's in there. So I know how this orients in there. Now the important thing is, if I can get this thing to focus, uh, I don't think my focusing is working well in this camera, but this is the last four bits of the MAC address, supposedly unique to the, to the planet. <laughs> we will see, but it's uh, uh, the first uh, four bits, or I think it's three bits, the first three are traditional ones that are used in Sun workstations, but these uh, last ones, I think that's three. These last three, they're unique, so uh, that's a number I have to remember. This chip is actually repairable. Uh, I could Dremel in on the opposite end of pin one and, and find the battery connections, disconnect from the, the dead battery that's embedded in here, and solder a CMOS battery uh, socket onto it. But I'm going to just uh, keep this one. I'm going to put my replacement chip in and see how well I do. And here is my new replacement NVRAM chip from DigiKey. Hopefully this will work for me. So it's now booted up with the new NVRAM chip in. And you'll notice that in the Ethernet address we have all fives, which is good because um, basically um, until I program this chip uh, that that those incorrect entries will be there so now I'm going to program the chip 
So there's the set of commands typed in again. That'll put the MAC address information and the only thing that's left to do is the date and time but that's done in Solaris. So let's do reset. So I'm setting the date and time in, in the console and it's the 11th month, the 23rd day. The time is 1234 and the, the year is 19. That's how you do it in, uh, in Unix. And there we got it, Saturday, November 23rd, 1234. CST 2019. So now I'm going to shut it down and see if it holds all this memory. If it doesn't, then either the, the new NVRAM chip doesn't work <laughs> or chances are I did something wrong. So let's go. We need to power it off because I want to turn it off and then restart it to see if uh, I still get the NVRAM chips, the ID prom uh, errors. So the chip is working. It's retained uh, the MAC address and also retained the t date and time. But it still says the ID prom contents are invalid. So I'm wondering if I'm putting an incorrect entry in. I'll have to research this. I, I don't know a lot about programming uh, these, uh, these type of computers I'm learning. So maybe I did something wrong, but what, what is working right right now is the date and time is there. Uh, it, it boots up uh, um, it boots up just fine. It just gives me that error message when it's uh, uh, starting up that uh, says that the ID prom contents are invalid so I must be doing something wrong but on the other hand <laughs> I did correct a lot of problems by replacing the uh, uh, NVRAM chip so I'll have to figure out what I might have typed wrong when I programmed the chip uh, I don't know. Anyhow so here we are back in Solaris 9 and uh, The NVRAM fixed the problem, and I think I know what I did wrong. It's something of how I put the MAC address in. I think the first three bits, you can't just, you know, the first bit's supposed to be eight. But um, unless I got the wrong machine type, because the, the, the number one section of the, of the uh, NVRAM memory is supposed to be the uh, machine type and I put 72 which I believe is for an Ultra 10 maybe that's incorrect I'm not sure uh, the zero uh, entry for the RAM chip is uh, one so I don't know I did something wrong in, in those entries I'm pretty sure but the thing is running I'll have to figure out how to correct that later but uh, let's see So I don't know. I'll figure it out. But anyways, I did fix it with a with another with a new NVRAM chip. I just have to figure out what I typed wrong when I programmed the chip. I'm sure that I can redo that. 